love you, we forgive you, and let's get some money in this town. And the money began flowing immediately. Call it the new Lebronomy. Within eight hours, the Cavaliers selling out of season tickets. We go from selling something that's unsellable. I mean, I can't get my hands on enough tickets to sell. Once dubbed the mistake by the lake, the city of Cleveland lost $50 million a season while LeBron was gone. Local businesses here are now hoping for a reversal of fortune. The man who seeks to rectify sporting emotions in the city once called the mistake by the lake. The lack of consistency from NCAA football powers and the never-ending dream of getting more Euro money into the NFL. All this and much more as we welcome back veteran sports business analyst for TV, radio, every other form of earthly communication, CEO of Haro Sports Ventures, known as the sports professor and who used to sport a really mean beard about 300 years ago. Rick Haro joins us in the studio. You have any more pictures of the beard still hanging around? Lebronomy, isn't that what they do? They change your brain around a little bit? Is that, is that what that That's is? That's perfect, though. They That's have right. changed the brain around in Cleveland. One they have. guy they have. worth Thank hundreds you. of millions of dollars. That's stunning. It is like your quintessential widget factory coming back home. It is bigger than landing a Saturn auto construction plant, honestly, dollars for dollar because it's the civic pride, it's the media mentions, and also it's the economic impact, and it's the feel good. There have been studies, a little bit more amorphous, but studies that say if a team wins, people feel better, they buy stuff at sure. the beginning of the following week. And so this team's gonna win in droves, but LeBron didn't get the memo saying you gotta win your first game. They lost to the Knicks of all people. But isn't this all just like all glory is fleeting because certainly it came to Miami, huge bump. Yeah. You go to Cleveland, which needed it even more. Right. If LeBron plays three, four years, what? Boom, you're right down on the tank again. Yeah, but you know what? He transcends all that because he says, now I'm home. Let's see what his next contract's going to be. The beauty about the globalization of the NBA is that you can do your Nike deal and your Gatorade deal, and you can do it and reach China, whether you're filming it in Cleveland or Oklahoma City or wherever, because the media today, the NBA is truly a global network. It's in 215 countries, and you can strike those major endorsement deals, whether it is Cleveland, Miami, or anywhere else. You like Cleveland, by the way? Just uh, curious. Uh, it's okay. Okay, next question. <laughs> it's okay. But, you know, the, but the water still, remember it used to be when the Cuyahoga uh, on set fire. on fire? Yeah, exactly. Well, that's okay. They still have the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is great, and the Browns will get better soon. <laughs> yeah. Remember when Johnny Manziel, by the way, that's was going to be the hero? That might be the funniest thing you've ever said. One of the days in the future we'll talk about Johnny Manziel because who is his agent? The same guy that represents LeBron. It's kind of interesting. There you go. Let's yeah. talk about baseball. Okay. Game 7 ratings for the World Series were actually up a little yes. bit, which is nice, but still this is the American pastime that every single year, no matter what happens, lead story is great game in the World Series, television ratings dying. The American pastime is never really going to recover to what they once were. Well, the American pastime is now the pastime of people who can stay up way past their bedtime and watch the end of a World Series. Now, I don't remember if you or I are old enough, but we would sneak out in the early 60s, 70s. Are you going to bring up the transistor radios again? Yes, I'm going to do that again <laughs> because we would do that together and we would realize how important it was to have World Series Day games. It was tradition. You watched it with your families and you were all excited about it. The ratings are not as big as they used to be, but the economics are bigger than ever. The average value of a franchise is now about 600 to 700 million dollars. It's up about eight or nine percent every year. A bigger growth in the stock market. They claim to know what they're doing, but let's see if the commissioner that succeeds uh, uh, a Bud Selig, Rob Manfred, is TV and youth savvy. That's really important. But that's a good point to make. They don't really care. Now, aren't the ratings sort of just old hat at this point? You talk about them, but when it comes down to the value the players make. The ratings don't mean much. And, by the way, Major League Baseball Advanced Media, the social media, the Internet company, if it were on the public market, it would be about a $6 billion company. And so we're in the age of archiving and playing it back when you want to play it back. And nobody rarely or very rarely watches a three-and-a-half-hour game anymore. They used to be two-and-a-half hours. You watch a guy like Baumgartner because you realize it is the greatness like a Sandy Koufax mm -hmm. or a Christy Mathewson. But as you said, that's Game 7. We all watch Game 7. My family, nobody's a baseball fan. They all watch game seven then they tweet about how important baseball is because they want to make it look like they, they go away for another about. 364 and days and then they come back <laughs> that's exactly, <laughs> that's exactly right. what happens ncaa here we have the university of georgia punishing a player for a charge okay. we have florida state not punishing players for charges the ncaa oversees all of these schools there's a mixed message that comes from college football that a guy like Jameis Winston can get away with it. Another guy like uh, like Hurley uh, or Todd Gurley, Todd rather, Gurley. can't get away right. with it. Right. Why doesn't the NCAA at least do something to try and create a consistent message 
that if these guys are going to be jackhammers, we're going to go ahead and punish them. Yeah, and it's a uh, appropriate but obviously naive but not really a question that because you already know the answer. The answer is the NCAA is fighting for its own economic survival. And I do think that the governing structure of the NCAA will get past some of these issues and then deal with the bigger issues. The big five conferences are now separating themselves economically from the others. We now have more autonomy that rests in the conference commissioners themselves. So it may come, you see Jameis Winston here, that the head of the ACC may say, look, Florida State, here are the state standards and practices you better take. And the NFL, believe it or not, uh, hard to believe, will be a role model to this because the domestic abuse, the charging policy. Say that again. The NFL, the NFL is will a be role a role model. model as far as how to create a standard that everybody ought to follow. This whole idea of domestic abuse or should you be suspended automatically when you're charged? Well, we don't do that in any other walk of life in America. We wait until the justice system actually plays itself out. So if you're an athlete, is it a higher standard? Is it a lower standard? The best we could say about the NFL now is it's totally confused. If and when they get their act together, it will be a mandate and template, hopefully, for the colleges to follow. Part of the thing is, too, they never wore a Rick Harrow jersey, though, the kids. No, no, no. But you know what? There is an NBA jersey now that's clearing its uh, cap space, so I want some dollars, and you're right behind me. I figure exactly Second. right. About a minute Second. we got left. Let's talk about the NFL quick again. They go over to London. They go over yeah. to Europe. They play their games there. Here we come again. NFL Europe, it didn't work once before. They make a lot of money over there. Is this just one of the more ridiculous comments and discussions we have every year? Absolutely, totally, completely not. And the reason why is because I knew you'd say that with a smile on the your expansion face. franchise may be eight games a year. The, the minor league was clearly a minor league deal. Logistics of the players, well, we may not care about them that much. They get a bye week after they play there. It is a fight to see who gets a franchise first, by the way, L.A. or London. They may both get them. But isn't it all, again, just about, about money? The money. That, that's really all it is. They're just going to put well, something. If it fails, they don't you say, care. When you say uh, that's all it is, the NFL is a $25 billion eight years from now annual business. So everything they do is about money. Everything everybody does in some ways is about money. Those are philosophical disputes you and I can reserve for a bar down the street. Not today. Nobody has time to agree or disagree with the statement about the world revolving around money. We all know that. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. Ten seconds. Is it going to be an expansion team or is it going to be a team that they'll put there originally in London? Uh, either one. We're not sure. You, that you, just, you just won't go on a record I for won't Jacksonville go on the yet, will you? No, not yet. <laughs> we like Jacksonville. Give it some time. Yeah, All right. Ask that next week. Always a pleasure, buddy. Right, Thanks a lot. Talk week. to you soon. After a short break, lower prices for a gallon of gas and plenty more profiting for the companies that make it. That on our check on Wall Street with the Money Master. And 51 minutes after the hour, drop the gloves. There's more to come right here.